Hello and welcome to video number 4 in my sometime series on optical illusions. I've got two illusions for you today so I'll tell you what I'll stop waffling and I'll get on with it. Here we can see a circle surrounded by some other circles moving slowly around. As they move we can see that the outer circles get bigger and as they do that the circle in the centre gets smaller. Then the opposite happens central circle gets bigger as the surrounding circles get smaller. Ok, as I'm sure you've already worked out, if I take away the surrounding circles then the inner circle is fixed in size, and as it moves round apart from its position doesn't change at all. Why then should the change in the size of the outer circles cause us to see a change in the size of the inner circle? Well this illusion is called the Ebbinghaus illusion and it's usually portrayed as two sets of circles with the central circle in both sets being the same size and the surrounding circles being of different sizes. There are actually a couple of possible explanations as to why this illusion works. One of them again is, as we've seen before, all to do with how far away we think an object is. Objects that appear small tend to be far away, and objects that are far away are actually bigger than they appear to be. This has the effect of making us see the small circles as being far away, and if they're far away, then the central circle is actually bigger than it appears to us, because it's its distance that's making it look small. Our brain then recalculates the size of the central circle and, well, gets it wrong. The opposite then is true for the other set of circles. Interestingly though, if this illusion is presented to people as a physical model of the circles, and they're asked to reach out and grab the central circle, even though the circles appear different in size, people don't make any errors in reaching out to grab them. Another explanation is more retinal in its approach, and suggests that it's the proximity and curvature of the surrounding circles. In the model with the small circles, the curve on the small circles is quite pronounced, and this has the effect of making us overestimate the size of the central circle. Similarly with the large circles, because they are less curved, this makes us underestimate the size of the central circle. On to our final illusion for today. Here we can see a rotating line, a bit like the hand of a stopwatch. Just outside the inner rotating line we can now see a flashing line. To us, either one of two possible effects are being observed possibly even both. It looks to us that the outer line that is flashing is flashing slightly behind the constant inner line. Alternatively, we could see the outer line at a slightly different angle to the inner line, so it looks like there's a kink in the line. We could, however, be seeing both of the effects. If I now show you the outer line as being steady, we can see that they are, as I'm sure you've already worked out, exactly in line with each other. So why should we see the outer line as lagging behind the inner one? This illusion has the imaginative name of the flash lag effect, and it all comes down to the fact that we're living in the past, and to be more precise we're living 80 milliseconds in the past. It takes our brain about 80 milliseconds to process the light coming into our eyes. So why does this work then? Well there are actually a number of possible explanations. There could be no argument that during the line flash, the light from both the inner and outer line is hitting our retina at the same time, so the effect must be due to the way that our brain processes this information. One possible explanation is that our brain, as part of the processing that it does, is slightly predictive. It tries to account for the 80 millisecond lag by predicting where the rotating inner line will be. And since the inner rotating line is constant, our brains can easily work out where the line is going to be 80 milliseconds from when it hits your eye, and so that's what we perceive. A second explanation adds that since the flashing line is unpredictable, our brain can't work out where it's going to be because it isn't constant, and so we see that as it happens, or in other words, 80 milliseconds ago. Another possible explanation is that our brain takes less time to process constant images than they do for flashes. So the flashing line is always being processed more slowly than the constant line, and so it appears to be lagging behind the constant one. 
you'll notice that as I increase the rate of rotation, the effect becomes more and more pronounced. And if I slow the lines down to a relative crawl, the effect becomes much more diminished. Okay, so that's it for this video. Don't forget that if you have any suggestions for interesting topics for me to cover, leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and until next time, thank you very much for watching.